What's going on guys? This is Rob and welcome back to Comics Request Monday. It has been a long time, but now that we finished Time Runs Out, now that Secret Wars is on its way in, now that we're done with the Age of Ultron and all that stuff, we can finally get back into this series. <laughs> so for those of you guys who are unaware, the Comics Request Monday series is a weekly series where I basically make videos on your most requested characters and teams. And so in this video, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be focusing on Brock Rumlow, otherwise known as Crossbones. Now, the way that we're going to explain his character in this video, we're, sim we're simply going to go with his origin story. We're going to go with how was it he appears in Marvel Comics. And the reason for this is because with Brock Rumlow, he really only has two significant moments in Marvel Comics. The first comes in the form of, of course, his appearance in Marvel Comics with Captain America Volume 1, issue number 359. But the second is actually the Death of Captain America event. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of turn this into a crossbone slash Death of Captain America discussion because with Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, with Captain America uh, Civil War, as well as the Agent Carter TV show, we pretty much have all the makings for a Death of Captain America event in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the origin story of Crossbones is given to us in backup features to Captain America Volume 1, issues number 400 and 403. With issue number 400, what we find here is that Brock Rumlow was previously the leader of a gang in Hell's Kitchen, New York, called the Savage Crimes. Now, among the members of this gang were two men. The first man was Ricky Layton, and the second man was Daniel Layton. Of course, they were brothers here. Now, these two men aren't necessarily wildly important to the ongoing actions of Brock Rumlow with regards to him being in a gang and his actions later on in Marvel Comics, but a person who is very important here is Rachel Layton, the sister of these two brothers. And the reason why is because with this initial origin story, what Marvel does is they give us a very good indication of the kind of man that Brock Rumlow was. What we find out here is that Rachel Layton had always been trying to follow her brothers around. She'd always been trying to, uh, I guess, maybe engage in the same kind of acts that her brothers were engaging in. And so with them being in a gang, her goal was to basically, I guess, become initiated into the same gang. And so the result was that she had met with Brock Rumlow alone. Now, Marvel doesn't explicitly tell us this. What they do here is they imply what it is that happens next. What they indicate is that when Rachel Layton meets with Brock Rumlow alone, that he basically forces her into a uh, basically into sexual intercourse he effectively rapes her and then he beats her which of course the result is that when uh, when her brothers Ricky and Daniel realize what it was that Brock Rumlow had done they try to attack him and kill him but the result is that in the conflict Brock Rumlow kills Ricky and of course as we know with Daniel he later on becomes a uh, an assassin for hire called Cutthroat now in issue number 403 the story sort of continues where this particular instance left off but it's very limited here. Marvel doesn't give us a whole lot of information regarding the youthful actions of Brock Rumlow aside from his involvement in this gang. What they tell us here is that somewhere along the line, that Brock Rumlow had basically become a uh, an instructor in Taskmaster School for Criminals. Taskmaster was effectively a villain who was able to mimic the fighting style and the memories of anybody that he was competing against. And so the result was that he was prodigious in his fighting style. And so Brock Rumlow, again, is simply just, just given to us as this person who was an instructor. And when Rachel Layton is basically brought to this school, she immediately recognizes Brock and then leaves in order to uh, basically avoid a confrontation between the two of them. And and that's really all we get. We don't really get anything more aside from that in these old stories. Now, following Crossbone's initial appearance in Marvel Comics and his subsequent appearances, what Marvel did was basically establish him as a character to round out the various villains of Captain America's rogues gallery. With characters like Red Skull and even Baron Helmu Zemo, most of the challenges Captain America faced were mental challenges or else simply just defeating an almost insurmountable wave of villains that were sent after him by Red Skull or Baron in Helm Uzimo or something like that, very rarely did we ever actually see Captain America able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a consistent villain. This all really changed with Crossbones. Crossbones was a character that repeatedly went after Captain America over and over again, but because of Crossbones' previous military training, because of his training at the Taskmaster's Academy, his fighting style, his strength, his speed, his endurance, they were all almost on par with Captain America, and so while he wasn't able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Captain America for the long haul, he he was able to hold his, own, hold his own quite a bit and even in several instances actually overpower Captain America. 
Now, going into the events post-Civil War, that is to say, with the death of Captain America event and the surrender of Captain America to S.H.I.E.L.D. forces once, Cap or once the Civil War was over, what we find here is that when we had discussed the return of Bucky Barnes in our Winter Soldier video and Bucky Barnes' assassination of the Red Skull on behalf of the Russians, that prior to the Red Skull's assassination, he had basically set in motion a plan to have Dr. Faustus, the same person we had seen from the Agent Carter TV show, basically brainwash Agent 13, Sharon Carter, who is the niece of Peggy Carter, and have her assassinate Captain America. Now, initially, when Bucky Barnes had assassinated Red Skull, it was believed that Red Skull was dead. But what we learned with Red Skull is he had actually brought himself back to life using the Cosmic Cube by taking over the body of a Russian and then kind of inhabiting that body for quite some time, which is why when we look at the death of Captain America storyline, we don't actually see Red Skull with a Red Skull. Instead, we see him as a, uh, as a Russian general. But the fact remains here that this plan was basically devised in two stages. The first stage was to have Crossbones operate as a sniper that would easily be targeted or I guess easily be sighted by Captain America and was really more of a diversion for Captain America. But what Crossbones would do is he would basically shoot Captain America and then create mass panic here. The second part of this stage was to have Sharon Carter effectively deal the killing blow to Captain America while everybody else was distracted with, uh, with Crossbones. But the other half half of this was that because Sharon Carter was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, nobody would suspect that she's the person that killed Steve Rogers. And so as we know with the death of Captain America event, the plan was a success. When Captain America was transferred to the courthouse by a convoy of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and U.S. Marshals, when he arrived at the courthouse, he immediately spotted Crossbones, but he made no action to avoid being shot by Crossbones. The result was that when Crossbones had shot Captain America, it created mass panic. And in the mass panic, Sharon Carter killed Captain America. And so as we know, or I guess as the events transpired following this particular instance, that Crossbones is immediately apprehended by S.H.I.E.L.D., but of course he's broken out by uh, by various supervillains and so on, and eventually goes back to his life of being a killer for hire. Now, at this moment right now in Marvel Comics, with the continuity reboot that they have going on with Secret Wars, what we presume is that Crossbones died, that he did not survive the collapse of the Earth-616 continuity. Then Marvel hasn't really announced any plans whatsoever to bring his character back in any form or fashion, but with a villain like Crossbones, who was a mainstay for Captain America, America for about 267 issues, he's pretty far from the top of the list of people that fans just want to see return. It's really just one of these things where he's not one of the biggest names out there in the realm of villains in Marvel Comics. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.